was to maintain the dignity and the respect of the, those hallowed grounds, as you called them, Katie. You know, Courtney, there is something very specific, though, about Section 60. Can you briefly describe why this particular area of Arlington is actually of note and why there really is a focus about the physical altercation that happened there? Yeah, so so Section 60 is, it is, I, I don't mean to imply that any part of Arlington Cemetery is, mm -hmm. not, uh, is not considered hallowed ground, but it's the place where many of the service members who have died or been killed in the recent conflicts are buried. That's why one of the service members that we see the photo of President, former President Trump standing at is one of the service members who was killed in, in Afghanistan in 2021. So it, it has taken on even more of a, 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 a there, are, there are even stricter rules there for taking photos and videos. And just so our audience understands ex exactly why that is, the, the staff at Arlington Cemetery and the Department of the Army in general they want to make sure that people aren't there taking photos of mourners. They want to protect mm. the dignity and the privacy of people who might be there who are still in a very real mourning situation, who may have lost loved ones in, in recent years. And they don't want to, they want to make sure that they are not in any way exploited. So it's not just campaigns or anything. It's media, media restrictions about what you can and cannot take video and photos of at Section 60 are extremely strict and they are very strongly enforced and they have been for some time. That's one of the reasons that this has really had so much outcry because of the fact that they were standing on the graves of individuals who had been killed in, or died in very recent years. Again, people are still very actively mourning these service members there. And then some of those photos were then released on social media. And as you mentioned, there was even some video that was used on it in a TikTok video for the campaign, Katie. Courtney, quickly before I got to let you go, though, we have not received any reporting um, that Trump himself or the Trump campaign has reprimanded or said anything about that Trump aide who physically assaulted an Arlington Cemetery employee, correct? Correct. And we do know that the military police were called right as soon after this, that, that incident, the pushing occurred, and they came to the scene. They did take statements from at least one or more likely several of the Arlington Cemetery staffers who were there who saw what happened, including the individual involved. They did approach some of the Trump staff members, but there was no formal statement given. And I will say in that statement that we got from the Department of the Army today, they said that the staff member has decided not to press charges and they consider this matter closed, Katie. MSNBC Pentagon correspondent Courtney Kube, I really appreciate you taking the time to explain everything about what happened at Arlington with Donald Trump and your time tonight. Thank you for being here. Thank you. And joining me now is Patrick Murphy, former Democratic Congressman from Pennsylvania, former actor, excuse me, former Acting Secretary of the Army, and a veteran of the Iraq War. Congressman, I want to start by thanking you, as always, for your service to you and all veterans. And I have to ask you, how offensive is it? Not just because you are a veteran and the former Acting Secretary of the Navy, but to have witnessed and to hear what Donald Trump did at Arlington National Cemetery. Yeah, Katie, as Courtney said, it's really when Donald Trump had complete disregard for our brother and sister veterans. Uh, Katie, I think, you know, I served in Iraq. I was with the 82nd Airborne Division. Uh, and our brothers and sisters who gave the ultimate sacrifice from Iraq, Afghanistan are, are in, buried in Section 60. It is a solemn ground. President Trump, former President Trump and his aides knew better. They didn't just disregard the rules, regulations, and the law. They pushed aside a woman who was doing her job, part of our Army team, for a campaign commercial, for a TikTok campaign commercial. I mean, how low can it get? Katie, I'm named after a Vietnam veteran. His name's Patrick Ward. He gave the ultimate sacrifice in Vietnam. Uh, and it just, not just breaks my heart, it makes my blood boil because we have someone who thinks he's still above the law. We have someone who doesn't care about our veterans. When it was his chance to serve during Vietnam, he got five deferments for a bone spur. He doesn't even remember what foot it was on. He calls my brother and sister veterans losers and suckers. He calls the former Secretary of Defense and his chief of staff two different four-star Marine generals, disparages them in General Mattis and General Kelly. General Kelly lost his son in combat. 
He dishonors Gold Star families. He attacks people. And that's why this army civilian, this woman who's just doing her job, who is pushed aside, doesn't want to give a statement because she's worried about retaliation. Well, let me tell you something. There's 900 veterans, 900,000 veterans in my state of Pennsylvania. And there's about over 20 million veterans across America whose voices will be heard on November 5th who say no one is above the law in our country, especially a 34-time convicted felon in Donald J. Trump. You know, Congressman, you talk a lot about how Donald Trump puts himself first and how he wants to make sure that he's going to get that photo op no matter what it takes to be able to get that. Um, A fellow veteran that is currently out doing and stumping to be able to right the wrongs from a Trump administration includes your former roommates, Governor Tim Walz. There's been a lot of hay that's been made from the Republicans, including J.D. Vance, who's also a veteran, by the way, um, who never saw combat. Um, But there's been a lot of hay made from the Republicans about Governor Walz's service in the military. You not only, like I said, was a roommate of his, but you guys were fellow veterans that shared time together, you know, behind the the prying eyes of the public when you were in Congress together, right? You got to know him really well. Share with our viewers kind of whether there is any type of uh, falsity in the way that Tim Walls views his time and his many years of service as uh, as a member of the military here in the United States. Yeah, as veterans are, we we honor our brother and sister veterans. When J.D. Vance was was nominated. I'm a Democrat. I'm a proud Democrat. I didn't attack his service. I said, listen, he served in Iraq. God bless him. I'm glad, you know, a Marine is, is on the ticket. Uh, when Tim Walls was nominated uh, to be the vice president, uh, it's a different standard. The Republicans attack, attack, attack. They did to John Kerry 20 years ago. They're trying to do it again to Tim Walls. Tim Walls, Katie, served honorably for 24 years. We have less we have asked less than 1% of our nation to serve in the longest wars in American history. After 20 years, Tim Walls could have got out. He could have got out of the military. He did two decades, but he relisted. He deploys with his unit after 9-11, his artillery unit overseas, leaves his wife, leaves his kids, leaves his job, goes over there as an assistant soldier, serves honorably, comes home, retires after 24 years, and what did these jokers on the other side do? They attack his service time and time again, and they try to be cute by half. Oh, we're not attacking the service. Tim Walls is a great American. I was so proud to be a member of Congress. And when I was going to orientation, I met Tim Walls, I was, and we said, hey, we're both Army brothers. We got a cheap apartment within walking distance of Capitol Hill because his family, his young family's back in Minnesota. Mine was back in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. And for these jokers, to attack them. These jokers led by Donald Trump, who got five deferments during Vietnam, he didn't have the guts to serve when his country asked him to do it. To attack someone like Tim Walls, it's despicable. It's just like he did this week. It's just like his modus operandi, his whole life. Selfless, shallow, and gutless. Congressman Patrick Murphy, I want to thank you for your time tonight. And again, I want to thank you and your fellow veterans for your service to this great country. Thank you so much. Thanks, Eddie. God bless America. Coming up this hour, Donald Trump shared a violent, sexist attack against Kamala Harris to his millions of social media followers. That has left many wondering just how low is he willing to go? But first,